Welcome back. This is uh, part three of my uh, videos on propeller balancing. One of the uh, guys on the field here bought a Dynavive. He's never used it before. He bought it because it was on sale at Aircraft Spruce. So I told him I'd make a little video on how to work it. So anyway, I, I didn't read the instructions, but uh, it, it basically seems to hook up the same way as, uh, as my expensive Honeywell machine so I uh, I took the vibration sensor and I made a little adapter so I could screw it into my onto my tester it uh, normally takes a bolt so you have to make a bracket to mount it on your engine wherever it is it is a little bigger like if that was on my engine it take up a lot less room uh, you wouldn't have room to put a cowl on and there might be some clearance issues even I had clearance issues with the uh, the Honeywell, I had to cut the end of the electrical connector off to make it smaller and put silicone in there to protect the wiring. Basically the same setup. The, uh, the cables are all attached to everything, so the uh, optical sensor is, uh, you mount it in approximately the same area. It works exactly the same as the other one. Now, when you turn this unit on, it does a self-test and it says it's got no tack. But if you line up the sensor it says the tack is triggered so that's uh that's an advantage you can actually tell if it's working and i don't think you can see it but oh yeah there it is that led is flashing on the end of it there that tells you you got a good signal that's the same as the uh, the honey well i forgot to mention that in the uh, in my other video when you're setting it up for the first time you got to try and get that thing to flash rapidly it tells you you're getting a good signal for your tack so anyway let's fire it up we'll, we'll just uh, turn on my tester and it starts to read the rpm I don't have to push any buttons it uh, is telling me that it's vibrating at 0 0.01 IPS so it's actually telling me about less vibration than the uh, than the Honeywell. The angle doesn't mean anything once you get that low, like I said before. So let's just do a test. We'll put it out of balance just to see what the performance is like on it. They tell you, and uh, I, I did see something there that it has a calibration uh, certificate and it tells you you gotta calibrate it every year. Well, if you built a little rig like this, you could forego that calibrating because you can put it out of balance like this. We'll put one washer on there, we'll run it, and we'll see that it's vibrating at 0.23 IPS at four degrees, which is approximately where we are, the 12 o'clock position, so it's close enough. And then what we'll do is we'll turn it off and we'll put a, a weight opposite that because that, that indicates your heavy spot. And of course, this thing is rotating, counter, rotating counterclockwise, so this is your 12 o'clock position as it rotates. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six o'clock is over there. So we'll, we'll add a weight to the six o'clock position and we'll fire it up again. And as you can see, it went back to 0 0.01 IPS, adding an equal weight on there. So it's definitely calibrated, and uh, you'd be able to tell if it's if it's not, you know, if it wasn't working, you wouldn't be able to put it back in balance, so it would be unusable. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. The uh, it's a fraction of the cost. I'm sure it'll do the job. It may be a little awkward to work with because the cables are attached to the sensors and the. Uh, the uh, vibration sensor is a lot bigger. So I hope this is helpful.